We are making French onion meatballs, which just tastes like a really deeply savory version of a classic French onion soup, but in a meatball and gravy form that is so fantastic. You will love it, especially paired with a nice side of creamy mash for the gravy to kind of like pull into their sensational, very easy to make. You know, I love a meatball. Okay. I will meatball just about anything. Chicken cordon bleu meatballs. Absolutely. We'll do chicken parm meatballs. Why not? Buffalo chicken meatballs. Count me right in. Okay. I will meatball just about everything. And this is so sensational. I cannot wait for you to try it. First things first is I'm going to, I've got some breadcrumbs here. I'm going to rehydrate these a little bit simply because these are not going to be simmering for a really long time. So I want to kind of just give them a heads up, um, rehydrating instead of, you know, counting on them cooking and doing it that way. So I'm just going to add just about yay much milk. Usually you'll do about equal parts. Don't know why I doubled the recipe here for that, but it's because I have more ground beef in my fridge. Okay. That is looking good. Set that aside. You don't need that this very second. A nice handful of parsley. I've got some fresh thyme. I'm just going to strip the leaves right off the stem. I'm going to need a fresh, a, a little bit of fresh thyme here and a little bit of fresh thyme for the gravy. I'm going to go ahead and give this a really, really fine chop because I want these herbs to disperse throughout the meatballs really nicely. Ah! Got the herbs in. I'm going to take some garlic. I'm going to do two cloves just because I'm going to grate it. And if I were to mince it, um, I would do more than that, but I think grating two cloves is plenty because you know, it gets like really strong when you grate it. Come on. And I can't smash it because if I smash the clove, then I can't grate it because it'll just be falling apart. Don't worry about the very last bit because I don't want you to grate your fingers. I want to know from you in the comments down below. I want you to tell me what your go-to recipes are for fall seasons. Are you a soup person or you are a crock pot slow cooker person? Do you love one pot wonders, sheet pan meals? I love to hear it down from you. I always find it so interesting because that's how you get to, you know, know foodie people is through things that they like to cook. I have a friend who she does like weekly, no monthly themed dinner parties. And that's like the coolest thing in my opinion. And I love to hear her creativity go into them and all the things that she does to make it really special. I just love that. Anyway, you got the garlic, lots of Pam. Got my egg in salt, freshly ground black pep. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in my absolutely not. Absolutely not. My breadcrumb mixture. I don't know why I thought I put a cup in there. I didn't. It was only half a cup of each, but for some reason I thought it was more. I'm going to take a handful of Swiss. This is Swiss. Use Gruyere. I'm going to add it right in because I want the meatballs to have that sort of distinctive, you know, cheesiness that the top of an onion soup has. Oh, I just love it. Hands go in. Give these a really good mix. Once well mixed, I'm just going to use a little bit of water to dampen my hands. I just find that it gets a lot easier to roll them if my hands are wet. Otherwise they kind of stick everywhere. I like to make them into decent size, pop them onto a plate because I am going to pop these into the fridge for just a few minutes. I want them to, I want them to sort of set a bit. And then what I'll do is I will roast them in a hot oven because I am going to be doing things a little bit differently. I'm going to be cooking the onions first since they take a while to really caramelize to that beautiful stage that I want them to be at. And if I were to sear the meatballs in advance, I think they'd just be sitting on the counter half cooked for too long. And that just doesn't sit well with my spirit, you know? So that's why, but you could sear them and just set them aside. Meatballs are done. I'm going to go ahead and give these a little cover with some plastic wrap. 
arch nemesis is the plastic wrap. And I'm gonna just pop these into the fridge like 15 minutes or so while the oven's preheating. And in the meantime, so that I won't bore you to tears, I'm just going to very thinly slice two yellow onions. Um, and then we'll start making our gravy and all that jazz. I've got some butter and olive oil melting in my brazier, and this is what I'm gonna make everything in. Like the meatballs are gonna go in here, the gravy, everything. I've got my butter and olive oil. I'm gonna add all of my sliced onions. I'm not gonna really, really rush this simply because I want those onions to really caramelize and I want them to really soften and get all jammy, sweet and delicious. Kinda like, yeah. And so in order to do that, you just need to give them time. You don't wanna rush the process. You don't wanna go ahead and crank this up to high heat because all you'll do then is burn the outside of the onions and inside the onion is still has some bite, it still has texture and that's just not what I want here. So this process will take me a good 25 minutes, but that's okay. But here's what I want you to do. Remember I told you that the meatballs have to go into the fridge for 15 minutes or so? I would say when you are about 10 minutes from your onions being done. So I'm gonna give you a rough estimate. This is gonna take 25 minutes. So in about 15 minutes or so, get the meatballs out, get those into the oven because the meatballs need to just be in there for 10 minutes. And then that way everything kind of gets done at the same time. So I'm just gonna babysit this, get the meatballs in the oven when the time comes, and then we'll pretty much start building everything. Onions look fantastic. They're very soft, beautiful color. Let's proceed. I like to always add a pinch of brown sugar to my onions when I caramelize them when they're at this stage. What that does is it sort of reinforces that really rich, sweet flavor, along with just a tiny little bit of balsamic vinegar, about a teaspoon or so. Together, they just give beautiful richness, balance, texture, not texture, richness, balance, and sweetness. Look at how gorgeous those look. Now you see down here, there's a lot of good stuff on the bottom of this pan. But before I go there, I need to go ahead and add some flour. You can go ahead and add some garlic here if you want to. We have a couple of cloves of grated garlic in the meatballs. I didn't feel so necessary to do that, but if you really want that strong garlic flavor, by all means, you just wanna make sure you cook out that raw, gar that raw flour. <coughs> now that it's there, deglaze with a little bit of wine. You can also just omit it if you want to. I'm cranking this back up because I just lowered it a little bit. And that wine's gonna begin to really lift all those brown bits that have collected at the bottom of your skillet or your pan or whatever it is that you're using. By the way, the meatballs are done. They went into the oven for 25, 15 minutes. They look fantastic. I ate one and they taste even better. Now we need our stock, just beef stock for this. Add that right in. Get that stirred. I'm gonna add a couple of dashes of Worcestershire, Worcestershire, like that. Some thyme, I'm just gonna strip it off the stem. This is gonna add a really beautiful flavor. I'm not gonna add any additional salt just because the beef stock's really salty and I salted my onions really well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my meatballs back into in, you know, in the pool, back into some heat. Look at the look at the bottom. See how gorgeous those are? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let this come to a boil and let it all simmer together about 10 to 15 minutes. It's not really gonna take that long because the meatballs are pretty much cooked through, but you wanna marry obviously all the flavors. You want that gravy to thicken and you want it to really absorb and just drink up all that beautiful flavor from the broth and also tenderize that meat just a little bit. So I'm gonna pop these in, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and simmer them. It's been about 20 minutes, and I don't know about you, but look at the gravy. It is a thing of absolute beauty, and if you don't get yourself a bowl of mashed potatoes or buttered noodles or something to soak this up with, then you're just living wrong, okay? Now, what I like to do is I like to sprinkle them with a little mix of shredded mozz and some of that 
Swiss. I kind of like to mix the two because the matte is going to give you really nice pull, but the Swiss is going to give you really good flavor. Now you could pop this under the broiler if you wanted to, but sometimes, you know what I love even more? I'm gonna leave a couple of those peeping through. So when I take a thumbnail, you can see that it's a meatball. I love when you just do this this way and you melt them gently in the pan and the cheese just becomes one with the gravy. It is my favorite. I love doing that. This is just gonna melt for literally a minute and then you'll have a little bit of parsley on the side and you're ready to sprinkle and go. I'm not gonna lie to you, I had a meatball and I had some other gravy already because I had to taste it for you, you know? And it is so delicious. That gravy is so fantastic. It's really rich, it's really velvety, has such nice depth, it's phenomenal. And I was thinking how nice this would be to make for a crowd because you could just make more of it, cook it in a bigger pan, and then you just have like a really rich, delicious meal that feels really special but really wasn't all that complicated at all. So I'm gonna let that cheese melt and that's pretty much it. Oh yeah. Now, like I said, I didn't put all the cheese because I do have to take a thumbnail for you so that you can actually see what it is that we are making in this video. But trust me when I tell you, you need to put all the cheese on and then let those all cook together. There, it's just, it's so good. Take a meatball. That sauce is incredible. It makes a really good amount of gravy because listen, there is nothing worse than when someone skims on the gravy. I can't stand it, okay? I can't stand it. Call it a pet peeve, call it whatever your heart desires, but if something comes with the gravy, I want you to know that I expect the amount that allows me to bathe in it, okay? That's the appropriate amount because anything less than that is just, it's wrong. Mm, wow, they're so tender. Mm-hmm, so tender. The melt in your mouth. Mm, go. Get the recipe, make this. You will love them. Hope you enjoy spending time with me and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.